Hey everyone, welcome to theCUBE's presentation of AWS Savings in the Cloud, only pay for what you need with AWS cost optimization. I'm your host, Lisa Martin, and today we are very excited to be joined by Matt Giroux, Manager, Principal Product Management at Aptio. He's here to talk about maximizing the value of AWS reserved instances and savings plans. Matt, great to have you. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks so much for having me on. Couldn't be more excited to be here. Yeah, we're going to have a great conversation. So the sure. cloud cost optimization landscape, really an important topic for customers. How do you see commitment-based discounting fitting into that landscape? It's such a critical you know, component of, of the landscape. And if the goals of optimization are really to make sure that every dollar you spend goes as far as possible, as effective as possible, commitment-based discounts are a huge component of that. Now, in terms of how that evolves, you know, it it's becomes a, a really exciting component and something that FinOps teams really need to think about, you know, sort of the balance between, you know, how much they want to, you know, cover, you know, particular aspects of their usage versus maintaining flexibility for, uh, you know, optionality in the future as their application architecture evolves or future plans evolve, whether that's M&A, growth, et cetera. So uh, a lot of exciting components to it, but the commitment-based discount, you know, becomes such a critical part of ensuring that every dollar you spend is as effective as possible. And that's what customers need, right? It's always doing more with less year after year. So at a high level, Matt, walk us through how Aptio helps customers maximize the discounts that you just mentioned. Sounds great. So Aptio does a tremendous amount for customers. Uh, you know, the first aspect is really providing visibility into the spend that these organizations have, how effectively that's, you know, that spend is being deployed and what those optimization opportunities look like. And for the organizations that, you know, want to take that a step further and trust Aptio uh, to automate and manage some of those commitment-based discounts, we take that on and, and we can do that uh, in a you know pretty unique way through some of the approaches that we've developed and, and ultimately deliver some really outstanding results for customers. So it's ultimately kind of where you know, customers and organizations need help in their journey and, and where they're at in their kind of levels of FinOps maturity. Uh, but ultimately, Aptio can provide a, a broad range of solutions that help them be as effective as possible. So that's Aptio's role. What's the role of third-party tools when it comes to commitment management and helping customers to really optimize it? Yeah, so I, I think, you know, third-party tools, you know, fill a very, you know, important aspect uh, in the in the ecosystem. Now, obviously the, the providers like AWS, you know, provide a tremendous amount of transparency and a tremendous amount of granularity into those aspects of, of billing and usage, et cetera. Uh, but ultimately, you know, there's always going to be a, a lot of different perspectives, goals, uh, et cetera, that, that come into how organizations want to manage, want to optimize and plan their spend. And that's really where, you know, third parties can help because they can tailor those solutions uh, to the needs of, of the, you know, very specific organizations, as opposed to, you know, kind of the, the breadth that AWS needs to provide, which is a, a solution that works for every organization, every potential customer. So it allows us to be much more targeted, much more focused and, and much more effective in a lot of cases. That's critical for organizations to have that customization in any industry. Let's talk about automating. Walk me through some of the main benefits of automating commitment programs with something like Cloudability Savings Automation. What are the big um, points in there for customers? Yeah, so this is a, a really exciting you know, thing for us here at Aptio. Uh, so the benefits of automation are, are just like from one perspective is just response time. Uh, FinOps teams have a lot on their plate. They're asked to do a lot. They're asked to coordinate and work across so many different application teams and across geos and across business units. Uh, so having visibility into those organizations and what they're doing and who's spending what uh, can be challenging. So they're pulled in a lot of different directions. Automation can tremendously help there just from, you know, taking things off their plate. And, and obviously as, as organizations try to do more with less, automation is a great step. Uh, the other aspect here is that you can take a very different approach when you have automation because it helps you operate at scale. And so you can sort of think about your approach to commitment-based discounts a little differently. So traditionally the way that the model tends to work for, for FinOps teams, especially early in their journey, is that you know, you're monitoring uh, cost explorer or monitoring cloudability and you see 
an increase in spend. There's some on-demand usage that has popped up and you might look at the tags, kind of see who's responsible for that, talk to them a little bit about it to understand, hey, is this particular database or compute instance or, or you know, whatever that resource may be, is that going to be around for a while? Kind of what's the purpose of that, et cetera. Understand some of those future plans and then ultimately kind of weigh that against uh, opportunities for savings and then decide on commitments. And, and whether that's commit, committing to a specific resource or committing to a spend level via savings plans, but ultimately it tends to be a reactive portion of the feedback loop. What automation allows you to do is kind of be proactive. And when you build in aspects of flexibility into that and do that at scale via automation to ultimately construct that savings instrument portfolio in a very different way that allows you to sort of build in that flexibility, you can be much more proactive. And instead of it needing to be sort of a multi-person feedback loop of that FinOps practitioner going to talk to an application owner to understand what those future plans are, you can just react in real time. And so well, there's always going to be a reactive component you, to shorten up that cycle time. And, and ultimately, that feedback loop can be tremendously beneficial because you have the flexibility to scale up and scale down and, and shape that coverage curve uh, along with the demand curve. And that's where things can get really, really powerful. And to be able to do that you know, in as close to real time as possible at scale becomes such a challenging aspect to do manually that as you you lean on automation there, that's where you can really deliver results for organizations that that are well beyond you know what what organizations could do themselves. So from an automation perspective, what you just described, it's delivering savings that manual approaches just simply can't reach for customers. Is that what I'm hearing? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It it it's not just, you know, like automating the process that organizations do themselves. It enables a totally different process that, that allows a, a just different level of savings and, and much more flexibility. And that's what customers need these days. So you talked a lot about flexibility, the importance and how Appio is really enabling customers to achieve it. How do you measure flexibility when it comes to commitment management and why is measurement of it critical? Yeah, so the way that I like to to have folks think about flexibility, and and you know we've got you know very specific formulas for how we measure it and quantify it here at Appio, but the best way to think about it is essentially how much could I lower my compute spend by, without needing or without any of my commitment dollars going to waste, okay? And so it's essentially how flexible am I to change my plans in the future? And so when we think about it from that perspective, flexibility becomes so critical, and it's actually you know it's it's not something that's necessarily top of mind, at least explicitly, but is really important. Uh, and it's part of organization's plan. And typically the way that you see that manifested is organizations leave some portion of their spend on demand because ultimately that gives them a little flexibility to, you know, maybe they cover 80% of that usage with savings plans and they have some usage above and beyond that has some flexibility. And whether that's flexibility for right sizing, flexibility for some divestment or applications that may be shut down at some point, they, they're they planning around flexibility, but not being conscious of that planning around flexibility. And so flexibility, if you really build that into your strategy of your, your savings instrument portfolio, you can really be intentional about that and then take that coverage to a, a much higher level because you know you have the flexibility to you know, reshape that curve and, and ultimately deliver better results you know, for the business. And so that's where things get really exciting. And it's, it's about taking advantage of you know, the flexibility that comes with various types of savings instruments uh, and a portfolio approach of all of those. So the flexibility hour to hour that comes from savings plans, and it's incredible. And some of the kind of big picture flexibility that can come with things like convertible reserved instances. And when you bring those together, that's where things can, can get really awesome for customers. A lot of power that that delivers to organizations. You talked about flexibility kind of as, as, as different components where flexibility can really help drive those savings. What are some of the other things when you're talking with customers that organizations really need to be considering when they're in that stage of developing their commitment management strategy and their approach to it? Yeah, so I, I think that it's a, it's a huge component. Um, you know, in addition to flexibility, which I, I think is one of the most important aspects to plan around because you so when you can be intentional about flexibility, that's where uh, you then have that sort of optionality because as we've seen over the last you know several years, there are, are 
you know, so many things that are, are unpredictable about today's landscape. So whether that's, a you know, the way that rates change and that the impact on business or, you know, we saw with the pandemic, like how quickly organizations had to pivot, flexibility becomes so important. And, and you never want to be sort of, you have your hands tied by yesterday's decisions. And so like, if there's one, you know, thing that I, I try to evangelize to organizations I work with, it's about the importance of flexibility and the intentionality there. Uh, in addition to that, you know, the, the transparency and, and all of the aspects of governance that allow organizations to push some of that visibility out to the edge and having those strong relationships between FinOps practitioners and developers and all of the other teams that are involved in those processes becomes so critical because ultimately having that, that visibility and, and self-service uh, for those organizations or, or members of those teams uh, ultimately allow, you know, teams to be more nimble, more effective, and more agile. And so uh, like those two together to me can can be tremendously impactful. Sounds like from an impact perspective, the, you know, the team relationships really kind of strengthening that there, which is so important and necessary, as you said, to be intentional about flexibility. I love that. Matt, it's been great having you on the program. Thank you so much for joining me. Talking about AWS savings in the cloud, only pay for what you need with AWS cost optimization. Matt, again, thank you so much. Thanks so much for having me, Lisa. And my pleasure. We want to thank you for watching and remind you to keep it right here for more action on theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage.